Today we're going to change the water heater anode rods and this helps uh, from keeping your water heater to corrode and what actually happens is this thing's corrode. We're also going to change out the bathroom sink because we have, we have found a leak. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to Over the Hill Adventures. My name is Stan and we've got a couple of little things that we're gonna do here today. We're gonna to change that anoid element in your water heater. And it's pretty important um, that you do this depending on how much you use your water heater. Our RV is about um, 11 months old now and we have just returned uh, from our last trip. And so it's time to do that kind of maintenance. It's not something that you need to go to an RV dealer and change out this anoid. Um, yes, you can get a mobile RV tech if you don't wanna do it yourself. I'm here to show you how you can do it very easily. You guys are familiar with our grand design Imagine 2500RL. You're familiar with that little sink and that little faucet? That's one of the things that uh, we've wanted to change and a lot of people wanna change. We're gonna show you how to do that. We got this off of Amazon for $30 um, metal and it's got some brass fittings. And the idea is uh, I got these grommets, so hopefully um, that'll save us from a leak when it goes on there. I'm hoping it's exactly the right size. So uh, this is our upgrade faucet. And as you tell, it's a little bit higher uh, than what we have now. The other thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna change the uh, element in our water heater. I bought two of these for $14 on Amazon, and we're gonna put both of these down at the, on the description, in the description, um, so you can see. But these are the elements, and what these are used for is you put this in the water heater, and the water heater, it, it corrodes these, um, these elements rather than corroding your water heater tank. So I'm gonna pull that out now. I've already flushed the tank, because that's what I do, uh, and I did it outside. And I didn't want to do it inside the garage, so I've already drained it. Funny story, um, don't forget to release the pressure in your water tank. I uh, unscrewed it, turned it out, and then it blew the element out at me, at which time I was covered in um, water calcium. <laughs> and I looked like one big white mess. It would have been great to have that on video because you guys would have had a great laugh. So let's start with the water element first because that's the easiest thing. What you're gonna need for that is a one inch, one sixteen socket um, and a, a good ratchet, real easy job. You're gonna need some plumber's Teflon tape. So when you put the new one new one in, you re-put uh, the Teflon tape around the threads. Easy job, guys. Don't pay somebody to do it. This is something you're gonna need to do every season or depending on how much you use your water heater, you wanna check it every once in a while. So let's go ahead and do that. This is your water heater right here. Look for this water here. Um, it's real easy to bring it, take it, take take the uh, cover off like that. Your your element is right here. You see all this stuff that comes out? Okay, all this stuff, this this calcium stuff, the deposits all at the bottom of your water tank. And you, every once in a while, you want to uh, make sure that you clean out your water tank. You just unscrew it, lefty loosey, righty tidy. And we're gonna just pull this out. There's not any water in there, but I wanna show you guys something. Look at that, okay? This used to be this. And you see how important. So uh, you wanna make sure you measure it and you measure that you have the right size, which we do have exactly the right size of um, element to put back in. As I said, it was 14 something for two of them. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Teflon tape. And why you do this is just to prevent it from leaking. Now the other thing is, is don't put any glue or anything out there because you want to think that it's going to make it better to stick. You want this to be able to come out. You don't want to put too much, just enough so you don't have any leak, all right? So here we go, I'm gonna just put that in here like this. I'm gonna screw that in there, make sure you, I do it by hand first because I wanna make sure that I do it um, and don't cross thread it. Once you've started your thread, you go ahead and put it in. 
and make sure it's nice and tight. And that's the end of it. And you're done. Very simple, very simple application. No reason to bring it to the dealer and have it done and have it serviced and wait how, however many months for you to do it. It's an easy fix, you guys. Um, you guys could do it yourself. Rhonda could do it. Uh, it's not a problem. And boom, you're ready to go for the season. Basically, this little board right here covers that little mess right there. You know, and how they do the wires. And so, this, and this is basically the ducting for the heater. So, the water was basically, if you guys can see, the water was basically coming out from the faucet. Let me get the light a little bit better. Coming out from the faucet up here on both of them come down here comes down into this hole i uh, wish see that down there oh. goes through there and then it goes out the belly of the insulation and through the membrane that holds up the insulation thus having water coming out through the bottom so that's that if you look up here you can see where the sink is attached and we're going to change out the sink faucet by unscrewing those plastic little rings that you see there and the, and the hoses. But I got to check first to make sure that I have the right um, washer for this, for this job. All right, so I got these washers on. Not the exact same ones, but I think they're going to work. If not, then I'll just go and change them out. But, we're, you know, you're going to be here to see if I see it works. So now I'm going to loosen up these plastic nuts that holds this faucet on and they're just hand tightened you don't need any special tools and then ron is going to take it off you want to pull it hang on hang on almost almost Arr, almost close 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 there we go go ahead and take it off yeah i'll put it back all right got a little bit of that grime that was on there all cleaned up cleaned up pretty nice and then ready for that to go back up there you want me to do it yeah got it all right that's pretty for sure does it it's make better it, it's gonna be nicer does it make this. a difference you think oh i think it's gonna make a lot of difference with this coming out farther away from the, the edge of the sink all right job done guys all right so now, so that you know, my washer, my connecting washers are a little bit different than they had with Grand Design, but this is, this is what failed right here. See this, that's what failed. Those little washers, that's what failed. All right, and that's what started leaking. So, and then of course, it's plastic. So, knowing that, I'm going to take out my compass connect and I'm going to turn on the water pump and in a minute we're going to see if I take a shower or not. Okay, I see a leak. Uh oh. Hold on. I see oh. a leak. You do? See, so. I'm going to try to tighten that now. The question is, is it coming from the tubing or is it coming from the washer? Can you guys see that? It's leaking like that. I think that's probably coming from the braided hose. And if it is, I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to try to tighten it up a little bit more. But it seems to me that's coming up from the braided hose. And if that's the fact, then I'm going to take those, those plastic off and then I'm going to put um, regular stainless steel braided hoses in there and do a connector type with a, with a um, shutoff valve. Here we are. Uh, we changed out our sink. 
Um, I changed out the rubber grommets, hoping uh, that that would solve the problem of the leak, um, which now I discovered that did not, and it's actually leaking from the connector here where, um, where the hose connector, and these are pressure clamps that they use for PEC hosing. Th this is a different type of braided hose. It's not really like residential PECs. But what we're going to do is I'm going to cut it right here. You sure? Well, there, there's no going back after this. Oh, no. Okay. So I cut that one. And I'm going to cut this one the same place. And here's the trick. All right. So we basically cut these basically in the same place. So I'm going to get rid of these plastic um, things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these small braided hoses. On this, from here to here, I'm going to put a valve, a shutoff valve, on both the hot and cold water. So if this happens again, you know, I could just shut off the cold water and the hot water or whatever, but I don't expect to happen. And that's, and that, that's going to be um, just a, a added bit of leak security is all it is. So this is a half inch connector for stainless steel faucets. And then I'm going to connect that to a half inch straight valve. So you can say that this is going to be more of an upgrade. This will go into this like that. And so this is just a half turn valve. So you'll be able to turn that on and off like that. If, if you needed to do any other changes or anything like that, or, or if you needed to fix that, that uh, seal right there. And then from here, bag of tricks this is my bag of tricks so this is going to go into here into this hose like that and then my valve is going to go like this and we're going to turn that on there like that and we're going to teflon tape that and we're going to tighten that up and put a pipe pipe clamp on that heavy duty pipe clamp we'll slip that on there like that we're going to put this on there like this And to be quite honest with you, if it's going to leak anywhere, it's going to, this is where it's going to leak. I'm going to make sure to see where's this. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it so it's easy access. So think about things like that. Make sure that's nice and tight. So if that leaks, if there's anything that's going to leak, it's going to leak right here. Because this is not real real PEX. PEX is in, for residential, underground, and that's what that, this is. So we're going to take this, and we're going to use this Teflon tape again. So imagine that this is coming out of your wall. I'm going to Teflon tape this. Oh, I didn't want to do that. And so Teflon tape allows it not to leak. All right. So we got that in there. I got this. A wrench to hold it. Got this. And I think that's going to work just great. Start it. All right. You don't have to do that right now. But before I hook everything up, 
I'm going to check this by turning on the water pump when I once I do the other one. And I'll check them and make sure that they're not leaking before I even connect them. Does that make sense? So we're going to do the same thing with this one. And this is a half-to-half -half connector. Heavy-duty pipe clamp. We're going to do the same with this one. Make sure it's easy access. Put this baby in there like that. We'll put all this in the description. Just a list of things, maybe links if they have them on Amazon. But you know, I was going to try to be a little slick and try to put red and and blue vowels, but they didn't have them. So I went to Ace Hardware and uh, let me go, let me move that up. Let me move that up a little bit more, let's see. Um. Mm -hmm. uh, flat screwdriver, go. that'll work. I didn't like that. I went a little too far down on the coupling and I don't like that. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit like that. And tighten it like this. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're going to do the same thing. So if this is not going to work, Ooh, there's some water coming out. If this is not going to work, it's going to not work right here. This is where it's not going to work. You got your hand. I got steel braided hoses on everything else. So I'm going to use my Teflon tape right here. And this is basically what you use in your house. This is basically what we're doing right now is basically residential grade right now. You know, a lot of this stuff is the reason why they do what they do is because moving a trailer is like moving is like an earthquake. It's like because when you're moving a trailer it's like it's like an earthquake in here, so And that's why they usually make everything so light, so it doesn't move. But the truth of the matter is, it's not good if it leaks, is it? So this is good. It's going to look like this, all right? So um, this is going to be the cold, and this is going to be the hot. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test the connection. Now let's see if the, let's see if Stan's plan worked. The pressure that usually comes out of the out of the uh, RV water pump, believe it or not, is better pressure than what comes out of our water regulator, depending on where you have it. It's almost there. So far, no leaks, no water. Remember, when we let all the water out, we de de decompressioned all the water lines. So now it's building up its pressure. I kind of, you know, when we were in, um, where was it so close, cold? We were in... Um, we were in Yellowstone. Yellowstone, where it got really, really super yeah. cold. Um, and that's, I think, when it started leaking. When you know that you have a water leak, your water pump will go on and off intermittently. That means it's losing pressure someplace. That means there's a water leak problem, most likely. And that's what was happening like in the middle of the night in Yellowstone, exactly. huh? Exactly, and we heard that. We just didn't find it till our next trip. All right, we, we have great connection, no leaks. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take what I did is I bought, where's the other one at? What you got? My steel braid hose. I bought two of these, okay? And so this I know 
will not leak up in the faucet. So we'll screw that up in the faucet. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to do both of them. Okay, I'm just going to do it by hand right now. So I'm going to try to fish this so this doesn't have that much pressure anywhere. And so we're going to do this like this, like a residential thing, like that. See how that looks? And then we're going to do this one like this. You guys see that? And then... We're going to put that clamp back on wherever that clamp was up here and uh that one screw and that one screw and so wow. let's tighten up those um let's tighten these up a little bit and then we are going to tighten that one tighten that one all right I think we're done. Let's check it. All right. We look up here. We look up here. Light. See if we see any leaks. No leaks. No leaks. And we have finished our upgrade of our water line to our faucet. And to show you that we have water coming. Our new faucet, guys. Wow, that's great, dude. All right, that's the finished product, guys. So, uh, we have valves now put into our water line, and we've upgraded our sink. I put steel braid lines up to the faucet, and we've upgraded our faucet. All right, folks, till the next time.